So to start us off, I'd like to invite Andrew Massoff to come back up to the keyboard. And I would also like to share, uh, Andrew's going to um, perform a, a little piece for us. Uh, Andrew was one of the performers in our September show of Wake Up and Smell the Poetry, where we welcomed um, teachers. We had some teachers who were poets, and we had some students sharing their talents also. And Andrew shared a song uh, during that time. And we asked him to perform a song kicking us off this evening. And uh, Andrew and his brother will both perform. His brother Charlie will perform piano at the end. And it's my understanding that both brothers recently won second prize in a state piano contest hosted by the Massachusetts Music Teacher Association. Is that correct? Congratulations to you. You can give you a hand. And Andrew will be performing Nocturne in C sharp minor by Chopin. So help me welcome Andrew up to the keyboard.
and thank you very much, Andrew. And good luck at your game. <laughs> Andrew made a special trip to share music here. And uh, when I host uh, the program, which typically adult poets come to and share poetry, although we have had students here as well, uh, we combine poetry with music every month. Uh, that's how I prefer it here. And so I'm happy that we could have some music in our program this evening, too. To begin our poetry reading, I thought that we would start off with some poets of younger years. And uh, they are friends of mine, poet friends of mine. And they are educated at home. And they are already very exciting and emerging young poets. And I would like to begin with Ali Palacios. If you could help me welcome her up. A very first person. So Ali, can you remind me how old you are? Seven. Seven years old. That's what I thought. And um, Ali not only has a poem for us this evening, but she brought a piece of art related to her poem as well. I was wondering if you could show it, uh, the front of your card there, and hold it up so everyone can see, maybe even a little higher, because we have people way out back. Would you mind if I hold it? We'll try to get it way up high here. And this is a special card uh, that uh, was given to me, actually. And um, Ali uh, writes poetry, and she often creates artwork of drawings or paper cuttings with her poetry. And I know a number of poets who are also visual artists and like to combine the two. And uh, it can be a really fun and uh, different way of sharing the combination of visual art and poetry. And inside, there's a special poem. And it's called A Summer's Day. And on the outside, there are some fashions. And actually, one has my name on it. So I'm thinking maybe that's something I should be wearing this summer, because I really could use a fashion consultant, Ellen. <laughs> and so inside, we have the poem. And uh, shall I leave it there for you? And I'm wondering if you could share your poems of summer days for us. A summer day. Tea cup. Teacups on the table, a teapot on the tray. This is a wonderful, wonderful summer day. With light shining through the window, birds chirping different songs. This is a wonderful, wonderful summer day. Can you take a bow? Thank you, Allie. Thank you, Allie. It's always hard to be first up, too. And you did a wonderful job. And reciting as well, that's something that I'm still working on as a poet. Uh, and I know it's not easy. So thank you for sharing your poem and reciting it with us and the artwork. And now we have her brother, Andrew, to come up and share a poem with us. And Andrew's a little bit younger. And um, come on up, Andrew. Uh, he has his poem on a special piece of art, too, right, Andrew? Can you come over here? And we can talk together, right? And we'll just leave, and you have to come over here a little bit because we want to make sure you're on the ca <laughs> camera, right here. Okay? A little closer. Andrew, do you want to tell everyone how old you are? Sh shall I? Is that okay? Four years old, is that right? Yes, okay, all right. Well, I just wanted to make sure. And so Andrew cannot write his poems yet, but um, uh, he dictates his poems usually to his mom. And one day I had come over for a poem visit um, in doing some poetry with the family. And Andrew, when his brother and sister were writing their poems on paper, Andrew said, could we write my poem on a toilet paper roll? And I, you know, it's not the way I usually write poetry, but I said, sure. And so that's what we did. And we did a collaborative effort where I asked Andrew some questions about recently telling me a tale of eating nine bananas. Is that correct, Andrew? Yes. OK. Um, so I think we start right here. And I'd like to, I'll share it with you. I'll read it right now. But you can follow along, Andrew, OK? It's a fun poem, by the way. One day I ate a lot of bananas. I think I ate nine. Is that right? Nine. They tasted like bubblegum going down. But if they were really pieces of bubblegum, my stomach would get big like a balloon. And then I might go up in the air. 
So maybe I'm glad they were just bananas. And maybe I ate only seven. And that's Andrew Palacio's poem. If you could give him a hand. Congratulations. Would you like to take a bow? OK. There you go. You can take it. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So now we're ready to move on. And thank you very much once again for starting off. We're going over to Elmwood School and some of the poets coming from Elmwood School. And I know that uh, poetry writing is very active over there. In second grade, the curriculum is oriented towards writing poetry. And the students keep going onward in third grade as well. And one room in particular I'm aware of is with Mrs. Paula Tangrady, who is here to join us this evening. And she has some of her students here also. And she always has some great writing projects going on in her classroom. And now, for some of the students coming from Mrs. Tangrady's third grade class, I would like to call up Hannah Murphy. Let's welcome her. <laughs> Hi, Hannah. All right, I'm going to join it right about there for you. All right, and I really like the title of your poem here. Um, and I thought it sounds a bit like being a nature detective. Can you tell everyone what the title of your poem is? Super Spectacular Animal Tracks. Super Spectacular Animal Tracks. And um, I was wondering if you could come a little closer to the mic. Right there's very good. And if you could tell us a little bit, because I'm curious, Super Spectacular Animal Tracks, what that's all about. Um, well, I was observing um, when it was snowing and I saw animal tracks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so um, I used the observation door, and I mm -hmm. wrote about that. Uh -huh. And um, will you be telling us what animal? Or... Mm -mm. No, OK. It's a mystery. So please listen to Hannah, and she's going to share a poem with you. Super spectacular animal tracks. The, the animals walked. The tracks melted into the snow. Wonder who did it. Oh, OK. Help me. Would you like to take a bow? Yeah, that's okay, too. <laughs> so Hannah's going to keep us guessing with her haiku there. And thank you very much, Hannah. I have Jay Tomlinson next from Mrs. Tangrady's class. Jay, come on down. <laughs> Hi, Jay. Hi. You have an interesting title on your poem also. Um, can you share that title with everybody? Yeah, you can come and stand right here. Run Water Book. It's called Run Water Buck. Um, what is a water buck, Jay? Um, it's an animal in Africa. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, is it uh, as small as a mouse? No. No, a little bigger than that? Yeah, it's pretty big. And does your poem tell us about what more about a water buck? Yeah. Because that's good. Can we see a water buck in Hopkinton State Park, maybe? No. No? How about the new common with the gazebo? The new gazebo? No. no. Not a chance, huh? Africa. Yeah. All right. Well, could you tell us a little bit more about a water buck, and you can stand right here, just a little closer, and there you go. Hear the water buck snort and bleat. Hear, see the water buck run. Has a lot of hair. Must want to get away from the sun. Has sharp hooves and horn and sharp horns, like swords. It, the rings on its horns look like ring cords. Here comes its predator, the leopard. Leaping, crawling, spinning, lunging forward. Run, water buck, run. Can you take a bow? Thank you. Thank you, Jay. It sounds like we wouldn't want to run into a water buck here in Hopkinton. Now we have Kayla Murphy. Kayla, come on up front. Hi, Kayla. Kayla, I saw your poem, and I thought, this poem is going to make my dog, Junie the Labradoodle, smile at home. Do you think that might be true? Could make dogs smile? Maybe. Possibly. OK. Um, do you have dogs at home? I have one. One dog at home. I was wondering, who else in the audience has dogs at home with a show of hands here? OK, we've got a sufficient number there. Well, I would like you, if you have a dog at home, to consider going home and reading a poem right to your dog and that it will make your dog smile. I'm, I'm pretty convinced and I think that if you have cats or fish or monkeys or beanie babies it might work too. 
So, uh, Kayla, um, can you read the title of your poem? And come up a little bit closer so everyone can hear. There you go, that's great. Brutus and Riley. Brutus and Riley. And now you're going to tell us about them? Okay. I remember playing with my dogs. We played with balls. When I threw the ball in the air, it was like a bird soaring through the sky. When they jumped to catch it, it was like they were flying. I love those dogs. Thank you. We will let you take a bow. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kayla. There's nothing like a good dog poem, or two dogs. Molly Darty is next. Please, Molly, come on up, and everyone can welcome Molly. <laughs> Hi, Molly. Hi. Could you put your poem right here? There we go. Aha, yes, I remember your poem. And if you could come a little closer to the mic there, that's great. And your title of poem is called? Halloween night. Halloween night. And I was wondering when I read it, is that your favorite holiday of the whole year? Um, I don't have a favorite holiday. You don't have, you just maybe um, appreciate them all? Yeah. It's a good way to be. And do you have a favorite treat maybe that you get Halloween night? Um, candy. Candy. It's not toothbrushes? No. No. Okay. <laughs> I was just curious. Well, you have... Um, quite a bit to tell us about Halloween night, so why don't you come a little closer and begin reading your poem. Halloween night. On Halloween night, I felt scared when I was three, four, and five. Vampires, ghosts, and other scary things. Boo. On Halloween night, I felt excited when I was three, four, and five. To get candy, house to house I went. What fun. On Halloween night, I saw bright collars, bright and bold, dark and dull, also princesses like me, with magic wands, sparkling fairy dust. Wow! On Halloween night, me madness was on its way to play rude tricks. No way! Daddy was there holding my hand on Halloween night. Were you really a fairy princess for Halloween? Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. oh, thank you for sharing a little bit of Halloween here in June. And now we have Emma Bograd. If Emma uh, is with us and can come up front. Oh, there, okay, so we can welcome her up with some clapping on her way. Hi, Emma. Emma, uh, would you like to put your poem right here? And, oh, uh, Emma, you have an interesting title. I'm going to pull this down. How are we doing with the mics, by the way? We're doing okay. I, I realized I didn't pull it down last time. Um, Emma, can you share the title of your poem with everyone? The Lonesome Mailbox. The Lonesome Mailbox. I have never heard a poem title like that before. And I was wondering, uh, who here has a mailbox? <laughs> okay, everyone can relate to this poem perhaps, and you have to consider now, is my mailbox lonesome? And can you share your thoughts about a lonesome mailbox? Step a little closer, and I'll put your poem right here. I'm just a pole with a box on top. I stand by the street, all straight and tall, and I think that car just passed them all. Day by day, the truck comes by and fills me up with paper inside, then says, goodbye. I'm lonely until you come by. You open me up to take out the paper and walk back into your house, leaving me alone. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Would you like your poem? Thank you, Emma. All right. So don't let your mailbox be lonely. Thank you, Emma. All right. And the next two poems we have coming from Mrs. Tangrady's class are about peace and offer some important well wishes for the world. And I'd like to introduce first Kent Berlin. Help me welcome Kent up. And thank, hi Kent. Okay, we'll put it here for now. And I was just wondering if you could step a little closer to the mic there and tell me if you um, could tell us a little bit why you chose to write about peace. Um, do you remember? Well, we were talking about George, <coughs> Um, George King, uh, Luther, George King, I can't say his name, Luther King, George, Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King, George, 
Martin Luther King George, and he was really, and he thought we sh he should have peace to the world. Mm -hmm. And so we were talking about peace, and I decided to write a poem about peace. Mm -hmm. To offer it to the world also. Yes. And um, so you have a lovely poem to share and an illustration. Uh, what kind of bird is this? Um, I think it's a dove. A dove, a little graphic art on his poem as well. So please tell us about peace, Kent. Peace is like soothing music. Peace looks like a soft blanket. It sounds like a butterfly's wing beating and can be a pot of love. But peace is always a joyful feeling. Thank you, Kent. You can take a bow if you like. And thank you for bringing some peace to us in Hopkinton. I have another wonderful poem about peace coming by William Abernathy. If he could come on up and we'll welcome him up. Hi, William. Okay, and I did want to tell everyone, um, feel free to take a bow if you like, or you can say thank you if you prefer not to bow, whatever you like. Oh, I'm going, I'm going to let you come here in the limelight here. And you also have a poem about peace, and you have some great images in your poem, uh, mm -hmm. some different ideas of what peace might look like. Yeah. And I was just wondering if you had one thing in mind, what you think would make the world a more peaceful place. Do you have any ideas? Uh, um, no wars. No wars, okay. Yeah, that's a big one. So, And you have a lot of different um, images and ideas of what else peace can be. And yep. I'd please share them with us now. Okay. Peace. Peace is like the wave. Peace is like waves gently rocking a boat. Peace looks like the wide ocean. It sounds like a cat purring, and it can even be a softer sound, such as mouse squeaking. But peace is always relaxing. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you William. Mm. I think I've heard some peace at my house with mice squeaking sometimes. I like that very tiny sound. Now I'd like to call up some students from Mrs. Jean Martin's class in grade three at Elmwood as well. And uh, Ms. Martin must have had a project on thinking about colors because I, I received a lot of color poems. And the first of all, I'd like to call up Mallory Pishoff. If Mallory could come and share her poem. Hi, Mallory. And I see you brought your uh, poem up, and it matches your clothes. Is that right? Because you have a poem about the color black. Is that right? So thank you for wearing your black. Um, and I thought even Mallory's font in uh, printing out her poem was very dark black and classy looking. Nice job there uh, with your graphic art and, uh, and uh, your images with your writing. And I also liked in your poem how you shared that black is dark and it's also light. I thought that was interesting. So please share us more about black. Um, black is cold and dark. Black is the color of a spark. A tall black hat, a small skinny cat. Black is dark and also light. Black is the color of a shocking fright. Black is a thunderstorm. Black is a foggy Monday morn. Black is leather, smooth and sleek. Black is a crow and raven's beak. Small and square, yet big and round. Black can be seen all around. Black is a sound. Boom, boom. Black is a color full of gloom. Black is a shiny flat stone. Black has no color of its own. Thank you. Thank you for sharing a lot of interesting ideas about the color black. And now would the color blue come up, please? I mean, Matthew Carnes. Can Matthew come on up? Way in the back. Hi, Matthew. Hello. Welcome right up here. And we have to adjust that. And I'm just going to pop this over here for the moment because I, when I read your poem, I thought I felt like I was in so many blue places in the world, like the sea and up in the sky and in space, and even at the Blue Note Jazz Club in New York City. Have you been there? No, it's actually called the Blue Note Jazz Club there. And uh, I also felt like I was right smack in the middle of a blueberry pie. And now I'd like to uh, invite you to share what it's like to be blue by Matthew. What is blue? Blue is the heaven's light. Blue is Neptune, nice and bright. It is a kingdom in the sea. Blue is a blue angel flying with glee. Also, it is jazz. 
It's the sky and a dragon so high. Blue is a whoosh of wind, a splish of rain, and the mine within. Blue is a shipwreck. Without blue, we would be lost in a blur of colors. Blue tastes like a blueberry. Blue is definitely not merry. Blue is a cool ranch sauce, and blue is when you're sad because of your boss. <laughs> Thank you. Very good. Yes, and how timely and relevant the last line also. Thank you, Matthew. And now we have Matthew LaFleche coming up to talk about the color brown. Come on down, Matthew LaFleche, way in the back there. Hi, do you prefer Matthew or Matt? Matt. I think I had both names down. Okay, Matt. Mm -hmm. So come on up a little closer to the mic here. Mm -hmm. And um, your poem is about brown, and mm -hmm. the uh, print is in brown. Mm -hmm. And we discussed how you're wearing a lot of brown things today mm -hmm. to match your poem, and even have brown hair and brown eyes today for matching your poem. Thank you for working on that for us. And uh, I was wondering, um, one of my favorite things to eat is brown. And I wondered if you covered it. Can you guess what one of my favorite brown things would be to eat? Um, chocolate. Oh, very good. That's right. Are you going to tell us a little about chocolate, too? Mm. Maybe. You want, you want to tell us everything and share your poem? It's called My Brown. Mm -hmm. OK. Thank you. Brown is AJ's karate belt, a candle burning the color of soft felt, a, the feeling of sorrow, a frog in a pond, a father and boy, their thick, strong bond. The smell is fresh bark mulch, my chocolate Easter egg, me telling my dog, oh, don't you beg. My hair is brown, so are my eyes, also my shoes and house flies. Brown is the climbing tree, a leather vest, fun ever the best. Acorns falling, leaves crunching under my feet. Mmm, I smell something good to eat. Brown's also a crispy marshmallow, a dying plant. It's also a pair of brown jean pants, also a guitar and a soda bar. Now you know what my brown is. You want to take a bow? Thank you. Nice job. Okay, there you go. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. And thank you, Matt. And by the way, we have some brown cookies over there for when we're done. And now we have Griffin Zach to join us. And Griffin is going to be Mr. Red for us. Uh, Griffin wore red, and is, that's right, we didn't welcome you on. It helped. And. Um, did you want to talk about, uh, it was an interesting uh, situation uh, that we had when I was reading your poem about the neighbor. Is that okay to talk about? Mm -hmm. uh, I read the poem and there's a line in it that says, red is my strange neighbor. And so I said Griffin uh, by email to his mom actually. We might want to consider that because this goes out to Hopkinton on air. And you, if you have a line in your poem about your neighbor being strange in your red poem, you might want to. Take it out, because uh, your neighbor might see it. And then I received this message back that it isn't at all about his neighbor who lives next door, but that Griffin was talking about the planet Mars being a strange neighbor. And it sounds like Griffin knows a bit about space. And that's in his poem as well. So please tell us about red, Griffin. What is red? Red is a tomato, red is anger. Red is Mars, Earth's strange neighbor. Blood from a scrape. Seven out of 13 stripes, an apple in your lunch. Red is a fire truck screaming down the street. Red is a sports car fast as lightning. Red is a rose, rosy cheeks on a cold winter day. Red is strength, a sunrise on the ocean. Red is flames, red is twizzlers. Without red, the world would be nothing. And thank you, Griffin, for sharing about the color red. Next is Liam Palacios to come on up. Help me welcome Liam. Hi, Liam. Hello. Liam, um, I believe you have a poem about someone we might meet at Hopkinton State Park. Is that correct? Uh, no. No, uh -huh. because uh, really the title of your poem is Frankenstein. Mm -hmm. and this is the very first uh, Frankenstein poem I've ever heard. I was wondering how you know about Frankenstein. I read the book. You read the book, Frankenstein. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, then you are well researched. And um, you can put your poem right here if that helps you. And get that right there with the mic. And please tell us about Frankenstein. The day Frankenstein came over, 
Reading a monster book, nice and scary. Then a knock at the door. Who is it? It's Frankenstein. What, I yell? It can't be true, but oh no, it is. He crashes through my house, head bashing through the ceiling. Oh no, I cry, you're gonna wreck my house. And that is why, to this day, I have a very messy room. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Liam. <laughs> Thank you, Liam. <laughs> I think Frankenstein's all through our upstairs at my house. <laughs> And now we have a few poets coming from Hopkinton Middle School. First, I would like to call up Jess Rector. Jess can come on up and join us. Hi, Jess. I have to go up a little more for you there. Um, and I was noticing with your poem that uh, your poem, in, you're in sixth grade now? Uh, it shows a bit of wisdom as you leave the years of childhood and move on to teenage and young adulthood and all that. And I noticed uh, the sharing of some wisdom and looking at the world in a different light. And uh, I experienced that uh, firsthand myself. I, was, I decided to read my diaries from when I was 10 years old up to 14. And as I was reading them to my daughters uh, when they were that age, I was not prepared for uh, the shift of how you start to think of the world. And it's just the way life is. And you start to see um, that uh, there are, is happiness and there's sadness. And uh, you even sometimes see that your parents might not be perfect as you get a little older. <laughs> and. Um, but it's an interesting way of um, growing up into the world and expressing your learning of uh, everything you see around you and your emotions and, and how the world's changing for you as you're growing. And uh, I enjoyed your poem very much. Um, and I want you to just come a little bit closer. And uh, your poem is called Careless People. Yeah, OK. So if you could read your poem for us. Careless People. People just don't care. Their minds are on vacation. Not here, not Earth, not Mars, but somewhere in the distance. Their minds are all together in that same one place. But my mind, but my mind is far away from theirs with a big heart on its face. And uh, I just, I just love that last line there and the hope that you offer. Now we have Olivia Lipkin coming. Help me welcome Olivia. Hi, Olivia. Let's see where you are there. All right, so we have Olivia. And you have a poem about the sky. And I had the sense from reading your poem that you are a bit of a nature lover. Yeah. <laughs> or on that particular day. And I was wondering if um, your poem about being outdoors happened because you were outside and you came in, or you were just thinking in your mind about being outside on a nice day when maybe it was a blizzard outside? Um, I was just thinking about outdoors in general. And outdoors in general. Uh -huh. so. Yeah. Uh, well, you reminded me of a poet I really like, Mary Oliver, and how she loves nature. And I encourage you all to read her a bit. So if you come a little closer, and you can read your poem with all of us titled The Sky. The Sky. Stars are the freckles in the sky. They add a certain personality to the midnight screen that lies upon our heads, motioning us to go to our warm beds and sleep peacefully for the night. And when the night is morning, the clouds of the eyes, occasionally dripping with guilt and sorrow. And the wind is the hope, spreading within the soul, lifting our hearts into chilled happiness. So peaceful, that sky. She loves us all and watches us. No matter what time, what day, the sky is watching in pure gladness. As the children play about in the light of her heart, it gleams so brightly, it lights up many fields. And so we call her heart the sun. That sky, she is so lovely, that sky. <laughs> I uh, go to open mic for poetry and music, and we take bows all the time. It's really your prerogative, but I welcome you, if you don't mind. And thank you very much for sharing a poem about the sky. And I would like to call Emma Bianculli up. Uh, 
is, oh, there you are. Okay. Hi, Emma. I'm sorry about that. We haven't met yet. Um, may I shake your hand? And you are in fifth grade? Yes. And are you over at Hopkins School? Yes. Come on over closer to the mic. And Bian Culi. Am I saying that correct? It's Bian Culi, but. Bian Oh, okay. So I've used to You're it. used to it. I have the same thing with my name. <laughs> so thank you for being flexible, but we will call you Bian Culi. So if you come a little bit closer to the mic here, and <laughs> your poem. It has an interesting title. Could you say, share it with everybody before you begin? Stalking Griffins. Stalking Griffins. And um, that is a very interesting poem. I've never heard that one before either. And can you tell me how you were inspired to write about stalking griffins? Has anyone stalked a griffin here? <laughs> All right. I was reading a book. Oh, a little closer, please. Yeah. By Gail Carson Levine. Uh huh. And it was set in medieval times. So I was thinking about that when I finished reading it, ah. and then I started writing it. All right, so you're in a medieval world and thinking about stalking griffins there. That well, sounds like you like books and imagination. So please uh, welcome us to your world of stalking griffins. Stalking griffins, gliding on silent feathers, cutting through an empty night, talons ready to grip, stars shining bright, looking upon the ground for flesh to feed. Killer cries erupt directly from the lead. Upon the ground they shower, feeding one by one. The humans down below screech for help and run. Little of them escape freed, for as the griffins, time to feed. At last on breaks with long yowls, monsters depart, blood still dripping from their jowls. The sun rises in the village down below, for it is dawn, eyes crack open, mouths wide, each in a yawn. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, now I know. Now I'd like to welcome Michael Jackman up. Help me welcome Michael. Uh, and Michael, um, could you put your poem here? Yep. Thank you for coming tonight to read your poem. You're and um, I thought it, from Michael's poem, I noticed uh, it seemed like you were a fan of nature, at least in your writing. There. Yes, that day I was definitely inspired by nature. You were inspired by nature. And um, I was wondering if uh, you could tell a little bit how that got started in writing about being outdoors in nature that day. Um, well, that day I was sitting in student prep, which is our study hall, and I was looking out the window. And it was snowing, so as my poem starts, I thought about the seasons, uh -huh. and it eventually travels through all the seasons. It covers the four seasons. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Very nice, and uh, to me it felt a bit like a voice of Dylan Thomas also. So I appreciated okay. hearing your poem, and I know everyone would el also like to hear, so if you could just step a little closer and share your poem beginning with title. A Blossom's Pride. Flakes so white, they fall lazily, even in spite of my windy, excited glee. They hit a floor of soft velvet soil, and just like before, they sizzle and they coil. The flakes then sprout dirty brown leaves and somehow give out a nice spring breeze. But before I could smell its sweet, sweet scent, the petal shriveled and swelled, for it could never be content. As its dried decor fell to it with an unforgiving sound, for it was frozen like before, needed water through the ground. And leaves fell around it, all them colors of fire. A dying aura circled round it, seeming never to cease nor tire. As I watched it happen, as it all transpired, how could beauty grow so thin? How does perfection retire? Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. And we are getting to the end of our program here, and we have one more class with us this evening, and that of Ms. Sloan. And she is also a sixth grade teacher over at Hopkinton Middle School, and she's here somewhere in the dark this evening, so you could say hello to her when we are all having our reception. And from her class, to begin sharing a poem, we have Jenna Bogan. If you can help me welcome her as she comes up here. Hi, Jenna. 
and thank you for coming out to share your poem um, this evening. And I noticed that, um, Jenna, you, um, you mixed in uh, poetry about nature as well as about being human, humans in nature as well, um, where some people just write about the outdoors. It was nice to have that mix. And may I just say, I love Run Into the Caramel Sunset. Um, and uh, so please um, share your title and poem with us this evening. My poem is called Together Forever. The sun is beating down, the wind whipping through my hair. The sky is a crystal blue. Only puffy white clouds are showing. I feel the grass between my toes, and there's energy bursting from every corner. You can tell I am outside, enjoying what nature has to offer. But there is more, and without it, my happy place is incomplete. Lying down in the cool grass, I hear laughter at my side. A grin breaks out on my face. Together we lay for what seems like forever, our fingertips lightly touching. Finally, just as the sun begins to dip into the horizon, my best friend stands up, and naturally I follow him. We run into the caramel sunset. Together, best friends, forever. This completes my happy place. Thank you, Jenna. Uh, that took me back in time with my best friend. I think we were rolling down a hill together. And now we have Pamela O'Leary to share a poem with us also. If you can help me welcome Pamela. Uh, there she is. OK. Hi, Pamela. I understand your poem is um, a tribute to your grandfather as part of the Elder Tea Project that happens in sixth grade. Um, and I was wondering if you could just say a few words about what you did to learn about your grandfather for this project. And you're supposed to stand here, I'll say. <laughs> yeah. well, um, I, I, well, I interviewed my grandfather, and I learned a little bit about him and how, how he lived everyday life in Ireland. Oh. And I found out that Back in the 60s, he was a famous singer, and uh, I learned that he learned school through Gaelic and took all his tests through Gaelic, too. Wow. What was his uh, singing name? Oh, well, he was known as uh, Ireland's Elvis Presley. Oh, I'm glad I asked. That's very interesting. Well, I'm looking forward to learning a little bit um, more about him through a poem, and that's part of the, the Elder Tea Project, too. Yes. to write a poem and write about the interview and then invite them in for tea. Yes, so have a nice tea with him also. Thank you. Um, so please share your poem with us about Grandpa. Learning to live with an open heart is sometimes hard to do. Then again, learning to live with open arms is also tricky too. But when you're with people you care for, it's like an open door. Your heart and arms are always open, so love even more. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nicely done. Yes, thanks. And thank you, Pamela. And Grandpa Elvis. <laughs> now I'd like to call Jack Skelton up. There's Jack. Hi, Jack. And um, Jack, come on over here. And Jack, uh, we go from nature to roller coaster. Who's been on a roller coaster out here? Raise your hand. Um, actually, I have to put mine down. I, don't, I haven't been on one yet. I don't dare to yet. But uh, we go on one in a way with Jack's poem, which I thought interesting. And I was wondering, um, was Six Flags or was life your inspiration, or a bit of both? Um, it's a combination of how life speeds on and how a roller coaster goes through ups and downs. Uh, well, thank you for uh, the mix of that and sharing life in a roller coaster. And I look forward to hearing your poem. Could you uh, share the title and come up a little bit closer and read the title in your poem for us? Thank you. Um, the Man on the Roller Coaster. The roller coaster goes up, the track twisting beneath, then back down. Life goes fast, depending on what you do. So you better choose wisely. The roller coaster climbs up the steep hill. Then it goes over the hill, just like life, going up, then slowly crumbling. The roller coaster slows to a stop, just like life signaling to the end. A man on the roller coaster says, here's my stop. 
He gets off the roller coaster, then onto an elevator. He gets in, then presses the up button. Then the doors close. Would you like to take that? Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Jack. And, and so maybe I have been on a roller coaster then, okay? <laughs> thank you very much. And now we have Caitlin Bryan uh, here to share a poem. If Caitlin can come up and we'll welcome her. There you are. Okay, hi, Caitlin. And I believe we move on a bit to politics and some commentary about society and using art maybe to raise questions about how we practice patriot patriotism and in society. And I'd like to welcome you right up, right up here. There you right go. Here. Yes. And uh, please share your thoughts with us uh, with your poem called What We Stand For as title. What We Stand For. You wouldn't be here today fighting for that red, white, and blue flag standing for what you believe in. No matter what your age, no matter what your race, we are all human. We shall be treated the same, short or tall, thin or thick. We're all here for the same reason, freedom. To have a say in what we believe in, because no one will be left out or be the last one standing. One goes down, we all go down. Never give up. This is America. Thank you very much. And thank you, Kaylin. And I believe last on our program this evening, we have Vanessa Prathab. So help me welcome Vanessa up here. Hi, Vanessa. I'd like you to stand right here. There you go. And get a little bit closer. There we go. And we move on from politics. And I thought that your poem, Vanessa, was appropriate for ending this evening and showing how you talk about making a change. And I thought that was important in thinking about all of you here going to school as the uh, new generation coming uh, and thinking about making a change and making a difference in the world in different ways. And uh, I thought it would be a nice ending with the inspiration of the words by Vanessa. Please share your title and poem with us. Make a change. When I look into the future, some things have changed, but some things just still stay the same. Can you share a toy with another kid? Can you give it to them if they asked for it? Can you keep a secret in your heart? Can you stop a lie from coming out? Can you treat the poor better than the rich? Can you stop the jealousy? Are there people in the world without poverty? Are there people in the world without disease? Are there people in the world without illness and disabilities? Can we stop what's all around us if we all work hard enough? It's time for us to make a change. Thank you, Vanessa. And thank you, Vanessa. And we are going to end with the music of Charlie Massoff and then have a little time for lemonade and cookies. But I'd just like to say what a true privilege it is to be here as a host and to hear all of these wonderful poems beginning in grade three and going onward. Recently, I was able to hear some poetry coming over from the high school and they had a reading with 20 students over there so it's happening in all the grades and you never know where a poem will take you. I know I've heard them at conferences people have in different walks of life later on. Sometimes they turn into songs, sometimes they even are at a president's inauguration. So you never know and I thank you. Every single one of these poems was amazing and inspirational and important here. And so I'm so glad that they are being shared with all of you and your families and that they will be going out to the airwaves also. So thank you. And a hand for all the poets, please. Charlie, it's nice to meet you. And um, what grade are you in? Could you tell? Second grade. And uh, I understand that you were part of the piano um, competition recently and uh, won an award also. 
and uh, you have a song to share as you help us out onward to the lemonade and cookies this evening. Can you tell me what the piece is called? Butterflies. Butterflies. Okay, so we're going to hear a piece, Butterfly, composed by? Um, w. Ledge. W. Ledge. So please listen for Butterflies and watch Charlie Mazoff as he begins to play. <laughs> <laughs> 